Hello. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen before I've uh, occasionally shown bits about paper tape equipment. Uh, it used to be very, very common. It was a standard medium for computer storage, um, portable storage, at one time for well for several decades, I think. But equipment now is quite scarce and quite expensive. Uh, I've not figured out how to make a paper tape punch yet. Though I've got a couple of commercial ones, but uh, I've not figured out how to make anything yet because they need some rather precise uh, machining for the actual punch blocks in uh, a super duper hard metal that's not going to wear out or deform whilst punching. But readers are a totally different thing. And I have come up with a little design for a relatively low cost tape reader. The blue is the sprocket feed, which I'm using as a kind of clock because there's that, that exists at every position, whether there's data or not. And the others are the eight data holes across the track in sequence, the green ones. You can see if I move it slowly, the blue one, which is the sprocket hole, only comes on whilst the data is stable and when that goes up you can see the data change so it's going to change and then the blue one comes on again and that's reading the pattern on the tape the whatever's punched and this is just a bit of text rather than actual uh, data but just a bit of fun channel name but that does seem to work quite nicely. Uh, it's fairly simple. That's the emitter board, which is simply a line of backfiring infrared LEDs on 0.1 inch spacing with a couple of series, fairly large surface mount resistors on each uh, to allow for the power dissipation because at five volts, it's given about 20 ma to each lead. Uh, it, it, the resistors do get slightly warm, so that's why they're doubled up and spread out. Uh, and it could be run at lower voltage, 3.3 or whatever, or just to have one or two DAOs connected in series with it to reduce the light intensity if needed. But at least on this first test, it works fine with no adjustments. The receiver uses phototransistors. Again, point 0.1 spacing. And they're infrared, they're pretty much well spectrum matched to the uh, LEDs on there. They're not sensitive to visible light. I mean, I've tried shining a torch on the things uh, with a bare board, and they don't react. They've got pull-up resistors, one for each LED, and that's a, a 74HC245 octal buffer. Uh, which has Schmidt, Schmidt trigger inputs, which just cleans up the signal from that and gives you a nice clean logic level to the outputs for the eight data bits. And the uh, sprocket track goes to an LM311 comparator and through both sections, inverted twice. Uh, and that's got a, a pot on the back for the reference voltage, so that can be adjusted for optimum results and the optimum time so it's not over sensitive or under sensitive and the uh, the sprocket hole date the signal appears at the right time now i'm not had to adjust these they were the ones i've played with so far now originally i was expecting to have to put quite a big spacer between these so i was going to screw them one from either side into the plastic in the middle but once i've got the boards realized uh with the the space that being hollow on the mac and just set to match the height of the uh, opto photo transistors there, the sensors. And that's just a general support block to keep it rigid where it's on, where it's on a bare bit of board. The whole thing can sandwich together quite neatly. Now that, oh, yeah, the, the pins there, uh, be a, if I do another batch, that'd be the, that'd be revision, that'd go to surface mount so the pins don't stick through. The pins need cutting flush so they don't interfere with the tape channel. So that one's not going to fit flat, flush as it is because it's still got the throw all pin sticking out. 
that uh, if the cut flush has this one then the tape channel is fine um, on that I've drilled rather than trying to use the alternate side holes uh, I've just drilled straight through the connector mounting holes and put longer screws straight through the whole lot and uh, I've got it just taped down by the cable at the moment so I can use both hands to pull the tape without it all floating about and the cable springing about um, all, all I've got on here are uh, a set of series resistors uh, the eight, 8 in that IC, well it's not IC, it's a resistor pack there's 8 across that which are doing the 8 data bits which come from 8 pins on this side of the connector uh, and then the uh, sprocket feed hole track comes from an extra pin round here um, oh, that cool. it's one of the ones on the back, the rest, the rest are power and ground uh, and that's linked through a resistor which is just hidden under the edge, edge of the cable and feeds through to the blue LED so all of these are just LEDs to power with series resistors and the, the output is active low from the PCB it does appear to work quite nicely and as a as first prototype I'm quite pleased with it and other than that connector needing <laughs> cutting down a bit which uh, like I say, that was I was expecting, expecting to go on a much thicker, thicker intermediate piece. So I didn't, I didn't think that would be would matter, but it uh, turns out it can be a bit slimmer. So anyway, that does seem to work okay. Um, now, what it would need to make a complete reader is some kind of either pinch roller and capstan at this side to pull tape through, or uh, an actual sprocket wheel and uh, a slotted guide with a with the sprocket teeth can run in the guide to give an accurate feed. I mean that could even be done on a step motor which if then set correctly could be used to align each uh, track or each, each row of holes on the tape exactly in line with the sensors. So there's various possibilities with that. I mean, I've not found a, a suitable wheel yet but I have seen there's some tools are actually supposedly tracing tools for some kind of fabric or leather work which look like a, a tiny spur a little wheel a little brass wheel with the uh, steel pin sticking out of it and if there's one of those that happens to have the right spacing that could work quite nicely as a feed wheel but if you don't need the exact alignment if you just use the uh, sensor on the sprocket hole for data uh, valid signal then you can just pull it through smoothly uh, with a small motor or even by hand and uh, it'll get a, a decent signal just need to make sure you uh, only grab the data when that's stable the bit of debounce and it would work fine uh, I've only made a small quantity of these boards they are completely built as you see them here um, so there's not a lot to, extra to do so other than just bolt the thing together and trim that connector down <laughs> so again a good pair of flush cut cutters and just just cut it completely flat and it's fine so if anyone's uh, interested in one to uh, experiment with let me get, just get in touch and uh, I'll pass them on basically the cost anyway that's it just a bit of experimentation and thanks for watching